The conditional split transformation in Azure Data Factory's mapping data flow allows you to take your stream of data and then split that across different rows based upon a condition that you've set as an expression. So if the data has different values in it, you can then act on the data differently based upon those values. So in this example, I have a slowly changing dimension type 2. Now in here, I want to act differently on the data if it's a new row versus an existing member or if it's a delete. Now delete would, may not be very common in, in SCD type 2, but in this case, I'm pretending that I have a flag in my source data that says it's time to delete this old row. And so set a flag to true or to one and go ahead and delete that row when you see that. So what I can do here is I can add a conditional split. You add the conditional split by taking the transformation located just before where you want to add it into your graph. Click the plus sign, the toolbox appears. Conditional split is here under multiple inputs and outputs. And you're going to, in most cases, have multiple outputs coming from your conditional splits. And what I've done is I've said that within this conditional split, here are the conditions I've set. Let's make this a full screen. We can hide the graph. I've called this conditional split new delete or existing. And what I've done is I'll know it's a new row if the product alternate key or the surrogate key is null because that means it did not exist in the dimension table. If I've somewhere set a delete flag equal to 1 or true, then I can go, go ahead and uh, put this into the delete row bucket. So what we're doing here is we're setting conditions for the different streams, the data to fall in these different buckets. And because I've said do this on the first matching condition, all the data is going to fall into the, this bucket or this bucket or the final bucket. The final condition is default. So if the, if the conditions set in one or two do not match, the data will then be assumed to be an existing member. So with that logic being said, what will happen is, if the circuit key is not set, it's a new row. That means I want to act differently on the data. So I have three different sinks all going to the exact same data warehouse. However, I need to act differently every time. So in this case, if it's a new row, I'm going to set the surrogate key. So I need to set my surrogate key, and I'm going to set a create date because it's brand new. I'm going to set it to current date and then sync it. Now, if it's an existing member, what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to set the update time to current timestamp, but I don't want to change the create date, and I don't want to set the surrogate keys that's already set. But this is not an insert, it's a change to data in the database, so I need to also set an alter row. So I'm saying this is going to be an update because I know this is existing member, I'm already in the update row, so I'm going to say update if true. I'm just going to turn on my update flag, and in my sync I can go into my settings, and I can say make this only valid for updates set my key so I know that uh, this is the correct row that's being updated and that will then update those rows. Now an alternate way to do this would be to just put the alter row somewhere back here before the conditional split. Let me just walk you through this real quick. Because in the alter row I can have different conditions, different policies for those different types of actions on my database. I could say insert if, do that same check here, we can look for the existence of the surrogate key and if that's null, we know that it is a new row, so we're going to insert. And then we can say deletes if the delete flag is 1. And we could also say update, so we set the update policy as well. If not is null, so if not null, of the surrogate key. So we could do this here, and the problem is that all the data will be processed based upon those flags. Say. But then if I attached sinks right to this, I wouldn't be able to have different values set, different computed columns based upon those different conditions. Now there is one other way to do this. So if I added a conditional split after my alter row, what the alter row does is it sets flags for each of those rows that match those different policies and those different conditions. So you could always do this. I could say conditional split and I could say new row is a new row if there is a function called is insert. So if the row was tagged as insert from the alt from the alter row transformation, then make that a new row. And likewise, I could then say if it's delete to row, there is also a function. And so on and so forth, there's also an is update. But in this case, we're just going to do that without doing this first. We're going to do it the opposite. So either way is totally valid. In this case, we're making these choices. On the delete, I'm just saying that if the delete flag is 1, then it's going to fall into this bucket. I'm going to see the alter row to, you don't want to say update, we want to say deletes. So this is going to delete any row that comes in here because we know it's already delete based upon the condition set and the conditional split. And then we say allow delete in the sync and we match our keys 
and that will then go ahead and delete that that row and whatever rows match that condition. So that's how you can use conditional split in your transformations to create a different set of streams that work on the same data, but only data that matches specific values.